have you any rivers that you think are uncrossable and have you any mountains that you can't tunnel through you know that God specializes in things thought impossible and he will do what no other power Holy Ghost power can do have you ever been on your sick bed of affliction and and the doctors have done all they they can do you know that God God specializes in things thought impossible and he will do what no other power Holy Ghost power can do you know God specializes God specialize when your body is racking with pain when the doctors have walked away when enemies won't leave you alone I tell you, God, God, you know, God, I know God, and He will do what no other power, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost power can do may we pray oh gracious God our father we come now just to say thank you father we come realizing that it's another day's journey and we're so glad about it Thank you now for another preaching opportunity. And Lord, I ask that you'll hide me behind thy secret cross and cover me in your precious blood. I ask that you'll cover me so they won't see me but see you. Allow me to say what you'll have me to say. Allow me to do what you'll have me to do and have someone running action. What must I do to be saved? Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my God, my strength, and my redeemer. Amen. There's a word from the Lord. 
and you'll find it in our Lord's Gospel according to St. John. We'll commence our reading with verse 1 in the 15th chapter. John 15. Commence with verse 1. I ask that you'll please stand for the reading and reverence of God's holy and divine word. John 15. Commence our reading with verse 1. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. And it reads, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. And neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Just for the time that we have, I want to talk from these words of preaching. I got the hookup. I got the hookup. Shaquille O'Neal is one of the most dominant players in the history of the NBA franchise. He managed to win four championships along with many other personal accolades and achievements. And although Shaquille O'Neal has retired, he has proved to be just as successful off of the basketball court. And one of his most incredible off-court achievements is the fact that Shaquille O'Neal is a college graduate. And in a recent interview, he reminisced and he shared a story about a situation that he had faced while trying to attain his master's degree at the University of Phoenix. He said the University of Phoenix is mostly an online program. But I went to the head of officials and I told them that I don't want to learn online. But I want to be able to sit in a classroom and learn from the professors. So after he had told them that, they came back and said, sir, we're unable to do that. Because in order for a class to be taught in person, there has to be at least 15 students in that class. Now Shaquille O'Neal could have gave up. But instead of him giving up, he said, I paid for 15 of my friends. To get their master's degree. Now Bethel that sounds good and all. But just imagine if these 15 individuals did not have connections with Shaquille O'Neal. If they did not have connections with Shaquille O'Neal. They wouldn't have obtained their master's degree. From the University of Phoenix. My brothers and sisters, that's why it's important for us to be hooked up and connected to certain individuals. Because it's through our connections with others that the greatest rewards and opportunities are produced. And too often we think we have it made in the shade when we have a solo dolo. We think we have it all together when we try to do things all on our own. However, when things get hectic and haywire, when things 
things get chaotic and out of our control, we'll discover that we need to be connected to somebody. And that's the portrait that Jesus is trying to paint for us today. Because at this stage of the book of John, Jesus is facing the most terrible moment of his life. He is prepared to die for the sins of this world. And he knew that his physical presence with his disciples was coming to an end. Therefore, he gave his disciples a clear understanding of their position with God. And he told them what God expected from them. And for that reason. He gave them a lesson that will help them in the days to come. He simply said, I am the vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Now, if, if that's the case, we have to come to the conclusion that we are the branches. Now, I discovered through our scripture, it is evident. That God will use ordinary objects and customs from daily life to teach valuable lessons. Let me call my witnesses to the witness say he used stars in the sky to teach Abraham that his seed would be great. He used a powder and a lump of clay to teach Jeremiah that he has control over the nation of Judah. He used the valley of scattered and dried up bones to teach Ezekiel that he can restore Israel. He used the saw and the seed to teach us to ground ourselves in the word of God. He used nails and wood to teach us that he is our perfect sacrifice for sin. And as he did before, he uses the nature of the vine. And it's care to teach us that if you want to live a fruitful and productive life, you have to hook up to Jesus. But if you want to be hooked up, there are three things I want to tell you. Number one, you have to be corrected. Yeah, you have to be corrected. The vine dresser had many responsibilities. They couldn't sit down in a recliner chair, prop their feet up, and do nothing. However, these vine dressers had a job they had to do. Because in the Bible days, vines were planted all around Palestine. And because of that, the vine dressers had to cultivate each branch to get the best out of the fruit. But in the vineyard, you have to understand that there are two kinds of branches. You have those who bear fruit. And you have those that don't. Now, brother, we have to highlight the fact. That just because a branch is connected to the vine does not mean it'll bear fruit. Let me make it plain. Just because you are saved. That doesn't mean you'll act like, be like, talk like, and walk like Jesus. Let me come down your avenue. You can be a preacher or a ministry leader. You can sing and shout all day long. Your name can be engraved on the cornerstone or you could have helped lay bricks on the church and yet you live an unfruitful life. Have you ever seen a person that talks the Christian talk but they don't walk the Christian walk? Have you ever seen a person walk around with a mouth full of scripture soon as you see them talking about this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. But they turn around and have hate in their heart. Have you ever 
seen a person that's messy on a Monday, <laughs> trifling on a Tuesday, <laughs> wicked on a Wednesday, terrible on a Thursday, fake on a Friday, stupid on a Saturday, and act all sad and sanctified in the church house on a Sunday. That's what we call unfruitful branches. In church, I'm only 18 years old. But I discovered we have more part-time Christians instead of full-time Christians. Now you can't pick and choose when you want to be a Christian. But all of us strive to live a life that reflects Christ. I heard somebody once tell me I'd rather see a sermon than hear one. I cannot tell you should always try to bear fruit because you may be the only way a person can see Jesus. That's why the Bible says you shall know them by their fruit. But yes, there are two types of branches. You have the fruitful and untruthful. But the Bible says when a branch is unfruitful, the vine dresser will take it away. Now don't let that scare you. Because the term takes away is translated to the Greek verb a hero. And most scholars are inaccurate when it comes to translating Jesus' words. In John the 15th chapter. Because you have to understand when it says he'll take it away. It does not mean he'll cut you off and throw you away. Because if you are already in Jesus, he won't remove you from him. But instead of saying take away. Jesus' words are better translated to lift from the ground. Because he won't cast you out instead, he'll lift you up. Let me make it plain in the vineyard. When the vine dresser will go out to tend to the branches, he will notice that the branches were sagging down on the ground. Down on the ground you have insects, you have dirt, and you have mud. That's not a good place for a branch to be. Because if a branch is sagging, it cannot get health because of its current environment. So what the vine dresser would do, he would take that branch, take some string, tie it up to a trellis to allow that branch to get more sunlight went over your head. This is what the vine dresser would do. He would take that branch, get some screen, tie it up to the trellis to allow that branch to get some sunlight still going over your head. The vine dresser would lift the branch up to get it closer to the S-U-N. But let me tell you, God has to lift us up to get us closer to the S-O-N. Because the more we're closer to Jesus, the more we'll become like Jesus. And that's why God sometimes has to realign and reposition our lives. And I discovered that God can take any life that is bound to sin and lift it up out of the muck. Mary Clay. Can I tell you if I'm sagging? I don't want the Lord to keep me down on the ground. But can I tell you, God can rearrange me. God can realign me. God can reconfigure me. God can reposition me for his glory. I wish I had a few folk in here that can testify 
that God has lifted me up. Somebody ought to look at their neighbor and say, he lifted me. And because he lifted me, I can see him more clearly. Because he lifted me, I can love him more dearly. Because he lifted me, I can follow him more nearly. Drake put it like this, I started from the bottom. Now I'm here. Let me get down to the saved crowd. I was seeking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stay within seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despair and cry from the waters. He lifted me. Now safe am my love. Lifted me when nothing else could help. Love. Lifted me. I got the hook up. Number one, I have to be corrected. God corrects us by lifting us up. But number two, if you want to have the hook up, you have to be clean. Yeah, yeah, you have to be clean. The vine dresser. Would do whatever it takes to get a branch to bear fruit. However, if a vine was left without any attention, it would cause the branch to sprawl out and grow leaves, causing the branch not to bear enough fruit. Therefore, the vine dresser has to go through the vineyard. This time, he isn't worried about having a screen in his hand. But this time, when he noticed that the branches have leaves on them, he walks around with a pair of shears in his hand. Now, you have to understand that they will use these shears to prune the branch. Now, it's a difference between God repositioning our lives and pruning our lives. Because a wise and successful vine dresser knows that he has to cut off any bad spots, any useless buds, and unnecessary leaves off of the branch. My brothers and sisters, I discovered that we're just like those branches. Because every now and again, some stuff gets on us that shouldn't be on us. But I discovered although we have things that are prohibiting our potential, we don't want God to remove it. But I discovered all of us want to flourish and blossom. But none of us wants to be pruned. But can I tell you, God has the power and authority to remove anything he wants out of our lives. It may be someone or something that's keeping you from being what God wants you to be. And the only way God can remove the stuff is by pruning. But we all know we need to be clean. But pruning is the most painful part of the process. But although pruning is painful, it's still necessary. And can I tell you that trial you're going through in your life? That's God pruning you. When that marriage came to an end, that was probably God pruning you. When you got laid off of your job and you were terminated, that was God trying to prune you. When folk had walked out of you and started criticizing you, they didn't mean you're no good. God had to prune you. And I discovered that whenever we're going through the pruning process, we don't get
give the credit to God. But we give the credit to Satan. Let me come down your avenue as soon as trouble comes into our lives. The first thing that we say, said ain't nobody but the devil. But quit walking around and giving Satan way much more credit than he desires because it's not Satan. It's God trying to prune you. And I wish I had somebody here that can stand up on their feet or give God a praise and thank him that he pruned you. And because he pruned you, you don't go where you used to go. Because he pruned you. You don't hang around who you used to hang around because he pulled. He made your life complete. My brothers and sisters, never get discouraged whenever God tries to prune you. Because all he's trying to do is restore and revive your heart. David, put it like this, create in me clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. And Jesus told his disciples, you've already been pruned. You've been pruned through the word of God. My brothers and sisters, I discovered that the word of God can change things that we can't change. Or transform. I, I got the hook up. But if I want to be hooked up, I have to be connected. I have to be corrected. I have to be corrected. Because he lifts me up. I have to be cleansed. Because he prunes me. But the last step of being hooked up, thirdly, is you have to be connected. Somebody say connected. We can all be corrected and cleaned. But I discovered it won't do any good if you don't stay connected to Jesus Christ. The Bible says we have to abide in him. And that means we have to stay on the vine. And the reason for that is because a branch can only live if slap flows from the trunk of the tree and makes its way to the branch. And my brothers and sisters, if we don't stay connected to Jesus, we'll mess ourselves up because things can go well in your life but it's no good if Jesus is not in the equation and that's why the Bible says we have to abide in him have I got a witness and this morning before I made my way down to the church, I made me a nice cup of tea. I took my water and I put it in the microwave and I allowed it to warm up. And eventually the water had got hot. So I took my tea bag and I put it down in the water. And when I put the tea bag down in the water, I kept playing with the tea bag. I dipped in and I dipped out. I dipped in and I dipped out. And I discovered that some of us are just like that tea bag. We dip in and we dip out. But let me tell you, that you have to stay connected to Jesus. For the Bible says, uh, apart from me, uh, you can do nothing. 
Now you have to understand that it does not mean you can't do nothing without God. But it means that your life is useless without God. Have I got a witness? Because without God, you're like a fish without water. Without God, you're like a body without a heart. Without Jesus, you're like a car that does not have a transmission. Without Jesus, you're like riding a bicycle uh, without any wheel. Uh, without Jesus, uh, it's like going on a journey without having a destination. Uh, and I thank God, uh, I thank God, uh, I thank God for Jesus. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, and let me tell you uh, that I can uh, stay connected to Jesus uh, because 2,000 years ago, uh, he stayed connected to me. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, they marched him up uh, on Golgotha's mountain. Uh, they nailed him in his hand. Uh, nailed him in his feet. Uh, they pissed him in the side. Uh, and put a crown of thorns uh, on his head. Uh, he died. Is there anybody here that know he died? He died from the sixth to the ninth hour. He died to the sun refused to shine. He died to the earth began to rock and wheel like a drunken man. He stayed there all night Friday. Stayed there all night Saturday. But I early Sunday morning uh, some might ought to say early early Sunday morning uh, Jesus uh, got up out of the grave uh, and because he got up uh, I can get up uh, and if there anybody here that knows he got up uh, and if you know he got up you ought to do uh, what Jesus did uh, you ought to stand up on your feet and thank God for the hookup. Have I got a witness? Ain't he all right? Say yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I got the hookup. brothers and sisters on yesterday as I was getting myself together for preparation for today I was at my desk trying to charge my phone sat my phone down charger was connected to my phone but after a while I picked up my phone and checked something out but I discovered that my phone did not get any charging and it was still on the same percent that it was on when I connected the charger to the phone. So I looked around and realized that I did not have the adapter plugged in the outlet. My brothers and sisters, that's probably somebody here today. You're probably trying to see what's going on in your life. Things are not going the way you want them. But can I tell you, look over you realize that your life is not connected to the power source. There's probably somebody here that wants to get connected to the source. So right now, I want to give you an opportunity to get hooked up. Because when you get hooked up, he'll make your life brand new. 